We're here today with Ross Duvall, Chief Research Officer of the Milken Institute. Ross has a new paper, The Global Biomedical Industry Preserving U.S. Leadership. This is the result of careful research supported in part by the Council for American Medical Innovation. The report is available at milkeninstitute.org. Thanks for joining us, Ross. Glad to be here, Jeff. Well, what was the purpose of the study? The purpose of the study was to really document just how quickly the U.S. rose to prominence in the biomedical industry. There are 1.2 million people employed in the biomedical industry, and that translates into about $70 billion in wages and over $200 billion in economic output. And for every one job in the biomedical industry, there are over three jobs that are associated with that. So when you look at all the ripple effects throughout the supply chain, you're talking about over five million jobs either directly or indirectly tied to the sector. Ross, it seems that when most people think of the biomedical industry, they consider it to be a huge, well-funded, a, a giant machine that cranks out sophisticated treatments that only scientists can understand. Not exactly a place that looks vulnerable or that needs a lot of help. Uh, what's, what challenges does the biomedical industry face in the U.S. today? Well, one of the challenge, challenges that the U.S. industry faces is the changing nature of medical research. We're likely to see more personalized medicine in the future. We've already seen that begin to change. We don't have a regulatory approval process that really understands um, the different methods are required for that level of drug discovery and approval. Uh, also, the era of blockbuster drugs, drugs that sell over a billion dollars, are long gone. In a billion in a year. In a year, yeah. correct. And so the so-called blockbuster drug era is largely over. Pharmaceutical companies simply cannot expect to get $5 billion in sales from, from any one drug any longer as we move to much more of a personalized medicine approach, which says that the market's going to be much smaller. You might get 400 to $500 million of sales for a particular drug in a given year. So that's a big change in the industry. And the regulatory approval process is not adapted to that model of personalized medicine. Uh, that's a big big problem. What do you recommend that policymakers do to make the industry healthier and more sustainable against threats? Well, there's a number of things that we recommend. One of them is to realize we're in an international competitive landscape. And we were the first to implement an R&D tax credit. Uh, unfortunately, ours is not very high any longer. It's 17th out of 21 countries that have it. And we're the only major industrialized country that does not have a permanent R&D tax credit. So we need to increase it by about 25% and make it permanent. Also, the corporate tax structure in the United States is making our competitive position very difficult. Japan is the only country in the world that has a higher corporate tax rate than the U.S. does. And most other of our comp competing countries, from Europe especially, have reduced their corporate tax rates over the past 20 years even China has reduced their corporate tax rate, South Korea. So we're competing against these countries in the biomedical industry, pharmaceuticals, devices, biotechnology, and diagnostics. And they have a much better landscape. So we need to cut the corporate tax rate to the advanced economy average, which would put the federal rate somewhere around 23% today. It's at 35%. So that's something else we need to do. Also, we need to recognize that in an era of fiscal austerity, all government spending is not equal. We need to provide the FDA with the resources that it needs to move to a system of personalized medicine and adaptive trial designs, and also to fund the NIH at a higher level to help improve the clinical trials process, making it much more efficient. Ross, the biomedical industry requires a very sophisticated and educated talent pool of professionals to, to keep it going. What should the United States do to sustain the workforce of the future in, in the healthcare sector? Well, in addition to bringing the best and brightest to our graduate schools in the sciences in the biomedical area and encouraging them to stay here, we need to do a better job of encouraging young people in the United States to go in the so-called STEM areas science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We have seen a shrinking pool of available students going into those sectors, and the graduation rates declining even further. 
while we've seen places such as China vastly expand their pool of STEM uh, enrollment and graduation rates. If we don't encourage more young people to go into STEM education, we're simply going to cede this industry to other competitors such as China, India, Singapore, and perhaps even back to Europe. What surprised you as you and your team undertook the research that led to this new report? Probably the most surprising thing about um, the information research process behind the report was the extent that other countries are making investments in this industry. Not only in terms of funding of research institutes, but providing seed capital for commercialization. What has changed today that threatens the vitality of the biomedical industry in the United States? Well, in some major areas such as regulatory approvals, we've been slipping, where other countries have been making additional investments and improving the regulatory environment. And they essentially have been making those investments, in some cases leaping ahead of the United States in some fields, such as nanotechnology. Um, we, the United States still has the largest share of nanotech patents at about 26%, but China has over 20% of those nanotech patents. So it shows that in some emerging areas, other countries are leaping ahead of us. Well, thank you, Ross. Again, the new paper is called The Global Biomedical Industry, Preserving U.S. Leadership. This is going to be a very interesting read. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad to do so, Jeff. Thank you for having me.